Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us once again in our time. And if this is the first time that you join us, hopefully the content will be of your interest. And if so, you're invited to subscribe. So now I would love for you to meet a dear colleague, Andrea Saavedra Metoyer, well known as the intersectional therapist. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks You're for having so me. welcome. You're so right. welcome. We need to jump in the water and hear sure. about what it means to be an intersectional therapist. Okay. Ooh, what does it mean to be an intersectional therapist? You know, um, to be an intersectional therapist means to approach, and this is, I'm just going to use like the clinical terms from the therapeutic perspective, from the mm -hmm. therapist perspective, from this side of the couch, right? Um, to take into consideration the that a client's identities has just multiple facets right they are just not the person in front of you they are an immigration story they are um all the different things that affect them like socioeconomic background education gender um their sexuality um all these just different things that inform who they are and how they interact with the world and mm -hmm. It is just, I think, such an important, um, uh, like intersectional uh, feminist approach to to treatment. I just, I just don't see it any other way mm -hmm. um, other than to take all of those things into consideration mm -hmm. um, when treating my clients. I'm so glad that this approach to therapy is becoming more and more embraced yeah. in our field of work. Absolutely as a way of inviting more people to consider this as a resource, as a support to their healing journey. Yes, absolutely. You know? Yeah. You know, so many, um, you know, we've been, uh, at least from what I can remember, we've been, we've been kind of trained to really pathologize a lot of our uh, clients presenting issues. Right. But if you take a step back and really just kind of do more of a panoramic, assessment of a client, you'll see a lot of them really are just behaving in what I consider sometimes very appropriate ways for the situation that they're in or the cards they've been handed. Right. You know, right. and I think it's so helpful to approach therapy that way because I don't know, as a client, especially in such a vulnerable place, you don't want to be always told like, you're the one with the problem. Mm -hmm. Let's take a step back. Let's look at everything else that's going on. What have you learned? What, what are the environment, what's the environment that you're in? What is the water that you're swimming in. You yes. Know? Yes. Um, so I, I found it very helpful um, in um, helping my clients feel heard and seen in the treatment. Mm -hmm. And and I too find it very helpful to be really interested in context. Yes. Context. Context this is what, matters. This, this, is what we, this is what we're talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. Context. Absolutely. Context because the cookie cutter approach is not only useless, but dangerous. 110%. Right? We could miss so many things. We could be causing so much damage mm -hmm. to our clients if we literally just take a beat and just pan out. It's just all it, all right? it is is panning out. Yeah. Nothing, nothing like a panoramic view yeah. to give you more and better information. Of course. Yes. You know? Yeah. And we all, uh, as a dear friend of ours always says... Makisha, Dr. Lawrence, as human beings, we we long to feel witnessed. Yes. And yes. if we are meeting with someone with the intention of supporting them, and we don't take that beat, that step back. Absolutely. There's no witnessing happening. No, no, absolutely. We need to be witnessed. We need to be seen. We need to be heard. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yes, I will. That is my soapbox. <laughs> I'm joining you. Yes, please do. Yes. <laughs> the more the merrier. And, you know, thankfully, because this is more and more prevalent in our field of work, yeah. communities that for generations have been marginalized and for that reason have chosen to dismiss mm -hmm. therapy as a form of support because it looks suspicious. It looks too connected to... Uh, the ideas of the oppressor. Of course. Now. Yes. 
we as professionals look more and more attractive to the people who really could benefit from this support and who belong to the same communities you and I belong to. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Marginalized communities. Yes. Worldwide. Yes, absolutely. You know, it, it helps, I think, to to see people who look like you mm-hmm. out there. Yes. You know, um, I know looking for my own therapist. I'm looking for someone that looks like me or looks like you, uh, you know, because yes. I was like, they, they get it, you know, so it's really it's really important. It is. Um, and, you know, it's. It, you know, we, when we take even our own experiences and put them in our treatment and make ourselves more. Less of the professional in the room and more of a. I'm like your comrade here. I'm here to help you yeah. out, you know, real. Um, Like, I'm not I'm not here to like scold you or, or put you someplace i'm mm-hmm. here to like like i you know i tell my clients like you know i'm like i'm like a good personal trainer you know like you're gonna come to the gym i'm gonna i'm gonna help you out i'm gonna be here for you mm-hmm. i'm in your corner you mm-hmm. know and it helps when you know that person has an understanding of context um, right. or experiences the context as well. right absolutely right and by the same by the same token you know if if we're in the presence of a client who, you know, shares a lot of narratives in common with us Mm -hmm. culturally. Yes. Still, we're interested in their experience of it. Otherwise, I'm dishonoring their story. Of course. Of course. You know? Absolutely. And not everybody who identifies as Black Latina like I do has had every single same story. No. No. So... While we honor, you know, this multiplicity of identities, we also take into account each person has their unique. Yes. Their own, their own interaction with it. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Their story. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. On that note, because we, you know, went through a pandemic. Yeah. That in so many ways kind of moved the needle. Yes. <laughs> in terms of. Are people welcoming therapy as, as an option? Yes. What what did you observe about how that came to be? Okay, let's see here. Um, you know, the pandemic uh, and the shutting down of everything, I think that's what kind of really sticks out when I think of when I really saw things accelerate. Um, yeah. The... The scaffolding uh, that kind of held us up, mm-hmm. I, I think, in the day to day, the routine, the structure, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> the routine and structure mm-hmm. um, that day to day life brought to us, like, you know, the commute, the clocking in, mm-hmm. you know, uh, the structure of even the offices and stuff like that, that all fell away. And we were kind of left to our own devices and kind of being alone in our own mind. And a lot of people don't like that. Sometimes I don't like it, you know? Um, (laughs) Sometimes it's not always a pleasant place to be. So I think the things that we were kind of either never got the chance Mm -hmm. to kind of sit and listen to internally because the world does demand so much of us finally came to a head, you know? And um, just as I shared, you know, previously, like in my own personal experience, um, I make a joke that like, I was such a high functioning, I could be the most high functioning, anxious, depressive person. I accomplished so much. Mm. (laughs) And, you know, when, when the pandemic hit, I was like, oh my gosh, I am not doing well. (laughs) I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. Um, What is this all about? Because everything fell away. Yes. Everything fell away. And and I think for a lot of people, it was very eye opening to kind of be, either alone with their own thoughts or just kind of really be alone without even their community support mm-hmm. um, or to not have to like, for some people mask the whole time. They're like, Oh my gosh, I love this. I'm thriving or, Oh my gosh, I'm struggling. So mm-hmm. I think it was just a really eye opening experience for yes. a lot of people. Um, yes. Eye opening in brute force, sadly. In brute force. Brute force. Oh my gosh. So well put. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We all found out a lot about ourselves. In a in a in hurry. a brute in a brute in a in a in a fast way. Yeah, a lot of things yeah. came to a screeching Absolutely. halt. Absolutely, and yeah. you know, it, it was it was just it was just wild. Um, 
I'll leave you to the next question. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was just it's it was very eye opening. Yeah. Uh, but for a lot of people, um, it was in a good way and in a hard way. You know, yeah. absolutely. I mean, so many people uh, were throbbing. Yeah. Throbbing because all these distractions yes. of the day to day routine had fallen off. Uh-huh. And so now you have to face them. Yeah. And that can be so, ah. Yes. Intense. Like, absolutely. Flooding. Absolutely. Flooding because all the buffers are gone. It's, yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know, the commute is gone. The bu- the excessive busyness the noise, is gone. Yeah. The noise. The noise. Is the gone. noise. Now it's quiet. Mm. And you're like, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, this is the kind of thing that for many people um, who didn't know what to do with this throbbing, if they didn't have like a a, a, a circle of trust, a a love village, if you will. Yeah. uh, Wow. It was such a hard time. It was very hard. And part of what increased the amount of clients we yeah. We were mean. Business was booming. Ooh, but it was hard to be a therapist at oh, that yes. time in ways that I will never forget. No. What what stood out to you? Oh, wow. I mean, uh, yes, uh, the the clientele exploded um shortly after to to the point where I had to I had left my full-time job and mm. you know what? I mean, I was looking, I was looking to, to move into my prior practice full time. Mm-hmm. Um, and apparently no time like the present than like when everybody needs a therapist. Yeah. And I do have to like, I, I think it was really awesome that um, the virtual aspect really allowed me to ask clients, access clients that I, that probably never would have been able to find me. Yeah. Um, All up and down California, which yeah. is great. Yeah. Um, But, you know, I... Yeah, being a therapist, even being a therapist now, all the, just since then, from the jump, has been a task of constant learning. Like yes. there was just no space. You can you there was no resting of yourself in laurels. Like no, mostly because things accelerated so much on a socio political level that it mm-hmm. was a moral and ethical obligation to stay. To learn. To learn. To learn. Constantly be yes. uh, in, in this open space of what more can I learn? Yes. So I can be of service. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. It was, I was hungry for knowledge. Yes. Um, I wasn't even skilled in like couples and I'm like, okay, time to learn at least the Gottman approach. So I was like, I was learning that. And then mm-hmm. I was like, oh shoot, like I need to, you know, I need to unpack my own privilege. Let me read this book and this. And so mm-hmm. it was just so much learning. Yeah. It's such a rapid pace all the while trying to really help our clients through yeah. all of their own fears and anxieties and right. worries while our own were also coming oh, up yes. coming up to more than the surface i i cried a lot at oh, that yeah. time oh yes the things that uh were happening not only locally but worldwide to the oh, point yes. of worldwide protest absolutely uh, regarding social justice were emotionally draining, oh, yes. physically draining, spiritually. Oh yes. Uh really taxing. And as much as we're trained to be in the presence of someone's pain in a supportive way. Yeah. Uh and while noticing our own stuff, oh, yes. our stuff was loud. Oh yes. You know, I, I think <laughs> that it really it, it also changed how I approach connection with my clients mm. because, you know, sometimes I would join them in there. I'm like, listen, man, this, can I cuss on here? Yes. Oh, this fucking blows, man. It (laughs) does. It does. I was like, listen, I just want to know I'm also struggling. I wanted, Mm -hmm. I wanted to really normalize that Mm -hmm. one. I definitely didn't have my own shit together. Um, but I shed tears with my clients, you know, I, Oh yeah. I I'm, did too. You know, it's, you yeah. know, and it's all like, Oh, do you cry with your clients? I was, you know, I was sitting there bawling my eyes out. I was like, right. I was, but to, <laughs> yeah. to reflect back their pain, mm-hmm. I think was so important and just really shifted away this, this idea of professionalism, whatever that means. Right. In the yeah. sense of like, I am, I am a, this is like, this is spiritual work. This is, it is at least I, I consider it spiritual work and you have to connect mm-hmm. your spirit. Even if it's, even it's like the, 
virtually. And I would even say like the virtual stuff was even harder because you have to be so attuned to like, my eyes were like everything, every, every, every tone change, every, every fluctuation was information that, so my antennas not only were on high alert for myself, but also high alert for my clients. Mm -hmm. And so it was a highly sensitive time. Really? Oh yeah. Really? And interesting to hear you talk about um, your detailed observation of gestures, uh, you know, tone of voice, pauses. These are things that in general we do in person. Oh, absolutely. And virtually we had to pump up the volume because we don't get to see somebody's foot tapping. Exactly. You know, for example. Right. No, absolutely. You know, and yeah. so we had to, we had to really put so much effort yes. into the process so that we could listen with our with our eyes yeah yeah it was an interesting time especially also keeping track of what's happening to us inside and and like you said let ourselves be seen mm -hmm. even when joining someone in tears which even if we did prior to the pandemic in that moment oh yeah it was so essential we needed to can everybody needed to connect oh yes yeah absolutely and wow you you've given me something to to reflect on in the same way that you announced to the world i am an intersectional yeah. therapist yeah so that it says to the world i am interested in everything that describes you yes at the same time, revealing ourselves, our emotions, and debunk old ideas of what the professional therapist should, right. these shoulds, yeah, do. Yeah. You know, um, gosh, uh, self-disclosure is an art. It is. It is. And, yes. and there's a place for it in, in, yeah. the, in the work we Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Because who wants to who wants to sit and cry their eyes out to a wall? Right? No. And we're being genuine. Oh yeah. We're not self serving when we do it. You know, it's an art because we we we've learned when and how much to disclose of our inner world yeah. in service of yes. the person we're supporting. Absolutely. And in the pandemic, my gosh, we needed to say, I see you. I Mm -hmm. Two, I'm feeling that. Yes. You are not alone right. in this. You're, you know, and the amount of times I've, I've had clients say like, you feel that way too? I was like, yes, mm -hmm. girl. <laughs> uh -huh. 110%. You Listen, know? I'm in quarantine too. I'm I'm also here um, in the trenches with you. <laughs> yes. um, yeah, no, it creates a lot of, uh, you know, it's really, it's just compassion. And like I said, empathy at its, at its utmost. We're like, listen, man, I'm here. Listen, I'm here in the struggle bus with you, you yeah, know, it's, yeah. it's helpful. It's helpful. It you is. Know? It is. And I, I, would you say that it, it, um, uh, made our practice even more soulful than it was? Oh, absolutely. I have laughed with my clients. I have cried with my clients. Mm -hmm. We, it's allowed me to even know. Like if we're having like a really intense like EMDR session, like if I do the whole closing practice and I'm like, I know exactly what we can talk about now mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with this, but that we both connect on because we're both really into this. And yes. it could be like, I don't know how much we both hate the Game of Thrones series ending, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and they can, they can, we can sit there and laugh and joke about it. Yeah. And, or we could talk about our kids mm -hmm. and, you know, especially, you know, like in, in marginalized communities where we connect like as we say over cafecito like yes. we, you know like there's a certain kind of tete-a-tete -tete that happens mm -hmm. that that really makes people feel warm and welcomed mm -hmm. and that you you have to put that in there yeah you, you do have to. yeah you it's do. absolutely made it more soulful more yeah. um rewarding it's incredibly yes. rewarding mm -hmm. yes what a time to be alive as a therapist both wild and great. <laughs> yes. And also, what a time to be alive as someone who seeks therapy. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Especially when more and more people in 
uh, these marginalized communities that mm -hmm. that we identify with, that we belong to, um, are feeling more and more open Absolutely. to receive this version of support yeah. in addition to these healing ways that are part of our cultural life. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, no, it's 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 great. I always it's always such an honor for me to work with somebody who really does come from a community that just would look sideways to therapy. And I'm like, thank <laughs> yeah. you for trusting me. Like yes. you know, I I appreciate that. Um and it's it's just it's really it's it's honorable work and it's just mm -hmm. uh, it's a privilege, you know. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Agreed. Yeah. And and so the the pandemic, as painful as it was, has really up leveled. Yes. Absolutely. I would say our commitment to this. Oh yeah. The field. work. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, to be of service uh, has has it has a. a uh, an additionally, uh, what's the word I'm looking for in there? I don't know. I just it's know. it's it. There there's something more happening in in our commitment to be of you service. Know, it is. And I said this. I said this before. It's political. Yes. It, this is like yes. Yeah, you know, I was telling a client once. I was like, you know, this is like psyops stuff that we do is to help you find a way to live it's it's weird like i don't want you to like i want you to thrive mm -hmm. and i want you to like break shit down and yes i have to i have to be that person in your corner mm -hmm. that both allows you to this how god like to, to kind of um discharge discharge everything because mm -hmm. i i've had clients that are that are um that are uh, organizers or really like on the do the groundwork mm -hmm. um, and you know I'm like, if I could be of support so you can keep doing that, or mm -hmm. if you take a break, but you can spread it out to every, like, it is just, it's, it's beautiful work. Like it my, is. my thing is if I can, if I can recharge an activist batteries, I'm down a clown. Keep it up. Listen, mm -hmm. if that's not revolutionary uh, alliance, I don't know what is. Listen, I'm here to psychologically uphold you. So the system <laughs> doesn't break you down. Basically Boom. is, is, is my goal. That is my goal. And it's timely yeah. because all the stuff that was problematic for generations became mm -hmm. more visible in the pandemic, oh, yeah. not only to us, but to people who've inherited the privilege yes. of, be of belonging to an oppressor community. Right. And so allyships mm -hmm. were born. Absolutely. Or reinforced. Yes. You know, and so this is a revolutionary time. The world is experiencing some shifts painful rebirth baby right i Absolutely. mean and the momentum yeah is there fast. very fast you know and so for that reason not only do we need to be committed to learning more but we're inviting everyone whether you uh come to therapy or not yeah be about the business of learning more yes of questioning of dismantling yes it's, you know, yeah. it, it's learning, mm -hmm. humility, the humility of, I didn't know, so mm -hmm. now I need to know better. Mm -hmm. that one, that's a hard one for a lot of people. Yes. Um, there is the, the, yeah, just learning, unlearning, and, and just kind of really like the distress tolerance that's needed to hold those things. Yes. You know? Yes. It's. Like, as you say, it's a wild time. It's a wild time. <laughs> and now that you say uh, stress tolerance, because in the pandemic, so many people were literally experiencing the the shutdown alone yeah. that became lonely. Yes. Uh, the alone became lonely. Yeah. Uh, we needed to get so creative Oh, in, yeah. in in building community, in sustaining existing community. Connection was Absolutely. the thing, right? And so uh, that was a time to really uh, discover more of our inner world. Yeah. Yeah. There was a mm -hmm. lot of going inward. There was a lot of... <clears throat> 
a lot of people found out so many things about themselves. Yes. Some things that they didn't like or some things that they're like, oh, maybe I need to move through this world differently. Differently. You know, we got a lot of people who are like late diagnosis, uh, ADHD, autism, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that is its own, that's its own journey. I'm just going to use those two as, as an example, right? Yeah. Where, because those are, those are big like paradigm shifts on how you perceive yourself and how you interact with the world. Yeah. And it's like, you know, a lot of people are realizing, oh man, I move through the world differently mm-hmm. and I got to figure out what works for me. I got to figure out what's going to work also for the community if you're, if you're going to, you know, interact with people. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there was just a lot of like self-discovery and, you know, for, for some of my, for some of my clients and for some people, it's painful, but necessary. So necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's a lot of. I have to be, I have to be alone here with these feelings. Mm -hmm. And some of the journey is like me telling my clients, let's not assign morality to that feeling that you have, Mm -hmm. which is a hard one. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I feel mad. It must feel like it's just a feeling. Let's just, yeah. Yeah. Let's just sit with the feeling. Um, and, uh, understanding like your own inner world. Yeah. With, for some of my clients never, um, we're given a map of what that inner world is. A lot of us haven't been given a map. And so oh, here we true. are just thrust into this internal space. You're like, yeah. what the, what? what the fuck is this? <laughs> I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was truly an experience of, of, of throbbing. Yes, absolutely. It was just, it was, yeah. you know, I, I use an example of my own anxiety where it's like, I could feel it outside of myself. Mm-hmm. Like it was such a physical sensation yes. and the buzz was hidden behind all the busyness. Yes. And so you have to contend, you have to like yes. confront parts of yourself that right. potentially need healing or tending to mm-hmm. in a way that never needed to be tended to before. Exactly. And for people who uh, had a lifetime of consciously or unconsciously right. distracting themselves from the inner world, Absolutely. to have that experience, and especially without a, I, I tend to think of a love village. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Um found found ways of numbing absolutely very creative ways of oh, numbing yes. oh yeah but numbing non- nonetheless absolutely um what did you notice in your practice of numbing mm-hmm. oh yeah um as social media the double-edged sword the mm-hmm. thing that both connects us and lets us see the world is also a really good opiate uh, say it again <laughs> that's a really good opiate mm-hmm um, it is. Uh, I I love TikTok. I've seen really revolutionary things coming out of it. And we've and, joined TikTok. And we've joined it. I'm on there. Uh, I know. was doing a little cha-cha with TikTok. I'm like, yes, no. Yes, no. I love it, but I also like hate hearing myself talk. And I was like, I don't want to <laughs> see this. Um, but you know, whatever, content creation. Um, here we are. Here we are. Right? Right. Who are we to judge? Right? I didn't here we even are. We're know, cra- I, I didn't even know this was going to happen. You know, this is content creation right here. Yes. So it's, you know, th- that is um has been you know people were like i just scroll on end mm-hmm. um you know we're in california weed is incredibly accessible uh right if you could uber a piece of bread you could probably uber um a bowl <laughs> so like you know i saw a lot of increase in in substance use mm-hmm. um and that's a you know you gotta have a relationship like you gotta examine that relationship with people i'm yeah. not i'm i'm yeah. not judgmental i'm yeah i'm uh pretty uh what is it called what does somebody call me there's a term that they use and i can't remember off the top of my head (laughs) but you know a lot of that honestly like also shopping like i saw people like you know whatever gets the dopamine right you don't have to tend to the online shopping was through the roof (sighs) i i had some problems with amazon um it's tapered down Uh, (laughs) um but yeah no people were just Mm -hmm. just finding ways to to not deal with that throbbing, that, yeah. that buzz, that, yeah. that internal sensation. Yeah. Absolutely. But then at the other, at, at, at the other uh, side of the spectrum is the pain of people who did not have the privilege of owning the technology that allowed many to be virtual. We were complaining about being tired of these squares on screen. Yeah. Now, some people didn't even have a screen. No. And so it was. It, it was a rough ride. So, in many ways, one of my dear cousins, she she loved to say we were. It, it was the same sea, different boats. Absolutely, absolutely. 
we were all and so the thing is like so disconnected mm -hmm. in seeing people in the tiny boat mm -hmm. or just swimming mm -hmm. just uh what's it called uh treading water yeah right some of us were on cruises um complaining about the rough seas and it's like oh no there's there's there was, and I think that's where, you know, I, I talk about like the pros and cons of like social media is it allowed yeah. us also to see other boats. Yes. And that yes. is, I mean, I, I was mentioned to you in our, in our break that uh, social media was probably one of the biggest things that radicalized me because of so many things I saw that mm -hmm. I did not see before. Yeah. And it allowed me to see the other boats. Mm -hmm. And it allowed me to see people in the water, yeah. which was even more painful to see yeah. as well. I think it also deepened our view yeah. of uh, some other boats we were already connected to. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of bad boats out there, too. Yes. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was, wow. The veil has been lifting. Yes. <laughs> the. You know what? Sometimes it felt to me... Like more than lifted, it was yanked. Have you seen that off. scene in Orange? What is it called? Uh, Clock Clockwork Orange, where their mm -hmm. eyes are just like, I'm like, please, I want to stop looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to turn away. But yeah. we can't. We, we couldn't. Can't. We couldn't. No. We couldn't, and we shouldn't, and we no. mustn't. And we mustn't. if we are to grow. Absolutely. You know. So you hear the the phrase "post pandemic growth in progress." Oh, what does yeah. that What does that mean to you? <sighs> post pandemic growth in process. What does that mean? You know, for so the just the concept of growth, mm -hmm. um, which I could talk about a whole other pandemic. Um, it's about expansion. We've been yeah. like it's not a. I mean, you and I both know it's not a destination, right? Mm -hmm. But the post-pandemic growth expansion is really about uh, it's growth is really about expanding your understanding or not even your understanding. It's the living in a world and living in a moment of time where you are both capable of joy and calm and also be jarred back to life mm -hmm. and see the injustices of the world and having to live with those, all those contradicting realities. And I think before we were kind of able to kind of blindly just be like, my life is this way, but now we're not. Now we have to, like you say, the veil has not has, not only has been lifted, has been straight up yanked off our faces. Yes. And we now have to contend that we are, are at times complicit, mm -hmm. that we are at times um, trying to be part of the solution. And that it's, that our, our, the human experience right now feels very, rich and complex and hard and beautiful all at the same time all at the same time and where i think the post pandemic aspect is sitting with all those yeah pushes and pulls that kind yeah. of come with that you just reminded me of uh something i heard a dear friend and he's a poet matthew shinoda he said uh there's beauty in chaos oh yeah yes absolutely and that chaos revealed not only what's problematic but also the beauty that we're able to create yes because we are compelled we feel like we have no option but to do it absolutely because connection is calling yes yes it is in our nature mm -hmm. it is in our nature to commune mm-hmm to see community, see connection, to do like, like, um, uh, to connect and make beauty amongst all of this. Like, that's just kind of like when you see revolutions, there's always been community, art, yeah. beauty, and, and all of, and all of those moments and all of those changes. All of them. Yes. All of them. Which brings us to the idea that the arts always come to our rescue. Absolutely. Always. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, what would we have done without all these DJs 
uh, you know, playing music to help us get through this. Oh, yes, absolutely. I Exactly. Right? Music. Music. Abs- even like, you know, I'll, I'll go back to TikTok. There were some funny people on there. Like, yes. I'm like, thank you, funny content creator. Thank you. And, you know, now <laughs> and now the thing is like we're seeing it now with like using it to like bring things to attention. And yes. so we need. Oh, we just need all of it. We, we need, need all it. of it. We need you it. Know? And, you know, a lot of uh, people. And I've heard this a lot from uh, the current generation. Social media was a therapy of sorts. Oh, yes. uh, Filled with therapists. Yes. Uh, You know, and so it's part of what warmed people up to the idea that, wait a minute, um, maybe I'll have my own therapist. Yes. I think it really normalized it Mm -hmm. a great deal. It normalized it. um, Excuse me. I think a lot of therapists, since we were thrust on the virtual lens, we kind of had to like (laughs) self promote Mm -hmm. online in a way that like, yeah, you know, I think for the most part, none of us knew what to do or how to do. Exactly. So we're kind of, you know, you became a therapist and a content creator. You're like, what now? And so, yeah, I think it really, it really normalized Mm -hmm. um, a lot of conversations uh, around just mental health, mental wellness which is great. I think it's great. You know, if it gets yeah. people in the door and allows people to process their, you know, their life and their pain. Mm-hmm. It's moving yeah. us in a new and needed direction. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, on that note, when you think of uh, the kinds of stories mm-hmm. you were hearing yeah. at the time, what stood out to you in terms of uh, relationship experiences? relationship to self, relationship to uh, their mates, uh, family, You're just relationship. What, right. what kinds of things stood mm-hmm. out to you at that time? You know, for, um, we'll start with the self, mm-hmm. right? For a lot of people, it was a, an eye-opening experience of like, oh, maybe I need additional help. Maybe I've been, you know, Mm-hmm. Have I been, pre- been pretending this whole time? Mm-hmm. People have like walked away from jobs. They're like, this no longer serves me. And I was like, holy shit, way to go. You, yes. you know? Um, so for a lot of people, it was very, on the individual level, um, was almost an awareness of like, oh my gosh, like, do I have a diagnosis? Have I, do I need medication? Do I need this? What what else? They're starting to ask, what do I need mm-hmm. to feel healthy? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, there was a lot of um, grief. Yes. So much grief. So much um, mm-hmm. grief for, you know, those days that all bled into one and when is this going to happen? This apprehension, what's going on in this country? Who's, done, you know, it was just, it mm. was so much grief Yeah. Uh, in a way that I, I, even as a clinician, I wasn't prepared for. I've gotten a lot more comfortable with grief now, mm-hmm. but once again, by brute force, yeah. um, on the, on the interpersonal level, you know, I, maybe it's the demographic that I work with, the kind of people that seek out the intersectional therapist. Um, (laughs) There was a lot of um, disappointment sometimes with how people were uh, interacting with a pandemic. Relationships fell apart. Yes. You know, um, disappointment, uh, frustration. Mm -hmm. I saw some marriages get stronger. Uh, Cause they're like, you know, we're in the trenches together, baby. Let's too. do it. I did. Too. And others were on there like, ah. that's it. Um, the, we're living together. But I think for the most part, I just saw a lot of couples just really hang in there and, mm. you know, raise their kids together and mm-hmm. really admirable um, for them. And, you know, I think for a lot of people like with friendships too, I saw, you know, sadly like alone is because they didn't know how to, like, it was so hard to kind of connect Mm-hmm. Like after there was a while there where everybody was doing like Zoom, uh, what is it, happy hours, then parties, got, right? And then we got tired of being on the screen. Yes, um, because I think we also um, underestimated honestly how draining it is. I think we we know because we have to see people like really in really close face proximity. Mm-hmm. People got tired of that, and yeah. so um, they. I think there was more of a withdrawal. And, uh, and something I said earlier was like an atrophy of the, of the social, the muscle. social muscle. <laughs> They're like, I yeah. don't know how to engage socially anymore. Yeah. yeah. Which I think, you know, maybe it requires us to create more profound mm-hmm. and meaningful relationships, be more, um, uh, discerning. Yes. Which I, I don't think necessarily is a bad thing. It mm-hmm. means you have to be very deliberate mm-hmm. about 
who you spent your time with. Yeah. And, you know, through it all, even on my own personal level, the people I've gotten to meet and get to know past this, because I have been more deliberate, has been amazing. I have found yeah. a group of people in my life that surround me that just are just fucking delights. They just like light up my life and I love them. And it's because... Yeah. Uh, I just, I'm not going to waste my time mm -hmm. with, especially since my, you know, I think as you know, as a, as a clinician, right, you're going to be very guarded with how you spend your energy. And I think other people are becoming a lot more, mm -hmm. became a lot more attuned to that. Yeah. So the muscle has atrophied. <laughs> um, and so I think they're just being more deliberate with, uh, you know, how much weight they push, mm -hmm. uh, how much, how much they take on, which yeah. is a good thing. I think more people need to say no to a couple of things. So yeah. I think there's a more of a, a, a reckoning with that. Yeah. A reckoning. Yeah. So, you know, as I'm listening to you, what comes up is, wow, these are the gifts of crisis. Yes. The gifts of crisis, you know, what gets revealed. Yes. How much more deliberate we choose to be in mm -hmm. certain areas of our lives, because at that time, priorities became very clear yes. for many people. Absolutely. For many people. And I can completely identify with that. Yeah. You know, you, you really treasure your connections more, more, more so more deeply Absolutely. and, and want to squeeze the juices out of yes. life because yes. time is precious. And it was, I mean, on, yeah. like if you felt like, I mean, it was scary, you know, yes. you couldn't like, I was going out like getting groceries with like a full PPE thing. You're like, I got to take, you got to take care of your people at a distance. And then you <laughs> had to be very deliberate. It was, yeah. it was a scary time because we didn't know. Mm -hmm. And so when we, you know, as we continue to know more and more about COVID and stuff like that, like we, we get, we got a better understanding, but like you had to be, you had to be, a little you bit. had to be, you had to be a little bit. <laughs> when you said the groceries, <laughs> my, my husband the two of us looked at grocery shopping as an outing. Oh, me too. It was an outing. Oh yeah. No, my husband hated it. And I was like, listen, baby, I'll suit up, but I need to get the hell out of this house. I love you all. Wish me luck. And now I know that if, you know, there was ever a zombie apocalypse, apparently I'm going to be the one that's going out, you know, doing what I need to do. But it was, it was, yeah. it was, a, it was great. Target was always so empty. Right. <laughs> Everything was so empty. Frankly, I, I, I kind of missed that, but yeah, absolutely. It I'm was, knowing. uh, it was very revealing um, sure and in was. a good way. You know, sure was. As we say, trial by fire for a yes, lot of people. Yes. Mm -hmm. On that topic of uh, social atrophy. Yes. Because I, among the things I do is do therapy at a, at a university. Yeah. You know, so many of the students that, you know, went straight from high school into college on zoom it's heartbreaking on zoom yeah so once we moved into that hybrid stage of things yeah you would see the hesitation in the social interaction and you know we explored it yeah in in our conversations and it says so much about what that generation mm -hmm. um had to contend with Last night we had uh, our graduation at Cal Arts, mm -hmm. and that's one of the topics that was brought up, you know, during the graduation speeches. The idea that yes, it's so important to acknowledge and highlight the fact that for many of the students who graduated last night, it was their first graduation mm -hmm. uh, in person. Yeah. Since the pandemic. That's a powerful statement. Those poor babies. Yes. And all that it took to support them through this process of yeah. uh, developing that social muscle. Yeah. Ooh. It's rough. It, 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 <laughs> it, it, it's rough. It was rough. Yeah. And so I, I can think of last night um, <clears throat> what it was like to see some people walking across the stage and it's a feeling it's a special feeling it is i really you know those i my heart broke for those kids like for kids that i saw like mm. graduate by turning off their screen and i'm like that's how you gra that's how you got your degree they're like yeah like that just this is my graduation 
close it off the Zoom, you know, or, you know, yeah. students who were in March, like one client in particular, I was, you know, getting prepared for a grand night. Mm -hmm. was just gone. And gone. I'm like, these milestones, you know, the, yes. the, the loss. Yes. And for them to go and for some of them to go off and still go off to college and like, all right, I was, you know, way to go. I mean, mm -hmm. way to persevere and keep at it. Way to persevere. Absolutely. I mean, I'm thinking about how uh, the second semester, I mean, I'm sorry, the second year for uh, for many of the students was experienced really as a first year. Yeah. In the sense that it was the first time on the grounds. Yeah. of a campus yes yes that's that's freaking wild it is wild absolutely. yeah it's wild nothing nothing to sneeze at no no what a ride it was yeah they've been through it that's yes. you know i love my my i love my gen xers they're like i'm like y'all are feisty and you've been through it <laughs> yes and uh that's why i they I, I mentioned i keep two i keep a couple on my case just so they can keep me on my toes and uh <laughs> also just kind of like what it's like to kind of see them experience i i often joke with my you know fellow parents about even gen alpha right yeah i'm like we'll see the ramifications of this pandemic we'll see what the studies say in about 20 years i know of what this was like even for them yes they're also like it's it's really fascinating because i'll see like a lot of anxiety even the mm -hmm. kids because they now probably have more mm -hmm. health anxiety for good reason yes. right and then um and i could just talk i could rant i could just rave about the gen xers gen xers no gen zers yes uh, who are um, really uh, behind a lot of change and they're very adaptable. Yes. I admire them. I do a good too. Bunch. I do too. Yeah. And then, you know, we are very optimistic about the, the alpha generation, Yeah, you know, because of what they're inheriting from this current really activist minded. Yes. Generation. May they build on the destruction of yes. the previous systems. Yes. And as I had shared with you earlier, one of the things that was said last night in graduation by Director Gina Price Bison is that in addition to creating, you know, yes, the potential is for destroying. Absolutely. You can't and have that's one precious. Without the other. You can't have one without the other. That is precious. Absolutely. Because... This is such a, a pivotal, pivotal time. Absolutely. Worldwide. Oh, yeah. You know, um, destruction is absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. a, uh, a, a, there's a lot of, um, like, I'll, I'll use, like, anger as an example of, like, fire. And I'll tell my clients, you know, like, fire, fire destroys, but it also cleanses. And if you see something, like, Granted, out of control, we mm -hmm. got the situation kind of going on. If you don't tend to stuff, you get like stuff like our wildfires that we have here. Mm -hmm. But when tended to, when things are tended to, what grows underneath is what's necessary to come up. Like exactly. you have to. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. You know, I have a couple of colleagues in Panama. Mm. Uh, Lisbeth Gonzalez y Lustelia. The work they do is called constellations mm. and they explore you know in a, in a in a way that takes into account uh earlier generations yeah you know the narratives that get moved from one generation to the next right, right, right. uh the narratives that influence relationships since yes. you and i are talking about relationships relationships uh, ways of coping mm -hmm. all these things that we explore with our yes. clients one-on-one -on -one or family uh, therapy or couples so they do it in a way that it looks very much like um, uh, a dramatized situation right. where it's like you it's like a genogram comes to life oh my oh that sounds fascinating it's really beautiful yeah and one of the things I remember them saying during the pandemic mm -hmm. is that we have inherited from the generation who experienced it in 1918, mm -hmm. we have inherited ways of coping with a pandemic. Oh, yes. That we were not aware of mm -hmm. at the same time as the most recent 
folks to experience a pandemic, yes. we too are moving forward. Absolutely. Some coping skills, uh, you know, some some really healing ways of moving in the world. Yes. That is such a, I think, helpful thing to remember. Absolutely. It it's, makes me feel optimistic. Uh, we, yes. And we have to be hopeful. Right. That's a thing. It's it's if if we can't if we can't assume that we can't learn and grow and mm -hmm. build upon. Yes. Right. Build upon our inherited experiences. Yeah. Well, then then we're doomed. But if we hope that we can. And I think I I yeah. see it. So yeah. I know that we're capable. Right. Yeah. You know, then then there is hope. Yeah. There's absolutely hope to be had. I have to tell you, when I heard them say that. Yeah. It really hit me. Because my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, mm -hmm. was born the year of that pandemic. Oh, the, the, yes. yes 1918. Yes, yes, yeah. And I thought, my gosh, what are the things that our family has inherited because of that? Mm -hmm. You know, through the islands into Panama. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We, we've, you know, there's a, um, this book, uh, Grandma, grandma, grandmother's hands. Yes. That one. They talk about like, we inherit resilience mm -hmm. just as we inherit the things that we don't necessarily want to inherit, but the ability to persevere yes. and grow yes. is inherent as well. Mm -hmm. And we can't, we can't forget that. Yeah. You know, and, and it moves genetically. Oh, absolutely. Genetically. And let's share with our, with our audience a sure. bit about that. Ep epigenetics. Epigenetics. Fascinating stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, if you, it's really interesting because like a lot of people get hooked up on the, like the negative things that you can inherit. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to tell my clients, I was like, you know, you inherit the good too, right? Or yes. else you wouldn't be here. <laughs> um, you inherit resilience. Um, and what's really fascinating is like, I'll sometimes have clients like, oh, you know, my ancestors work so hard. I'm like, they also, I'm like, so then when do you rest? When is it time for you to rest if your ancestors work so hard? Oh, let's go deeply into this, Andrea. You know? Mm-hmm. Because you can't be claiming your ancestors and then keep working as hard as your ancestors. Rest. 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 And always find joy. That's if if this is the if you are the culmination of your inheritance, then it is time for you to learn to rest. Mm-hmm. And that's a new skill to learn because some of us never learned how to rest. Right. You know? Right. But the the perseverance, the the um, as you say, even the coping skills, the 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 hypervigilance, we'll say, right? Mm -hmm. That kept us that kept us alive. Survival. 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 Right? Anxiety is a survival tool, you know? Um it doesn't feel like it nine times out of ten, right? But like <laughs> the inheritance of that is if you look back to it, it's like, okay, let me look around me. Let me keep, let me keep looking. Let me keep looking. Let, let me, me keep, keep, keep my head on the scroll. Right. Exactly. Cause that's yeah. going to keep me in it. You know, it did keep, it, yeah. it kept everybody safe. Right. And then how do we learn to put that down? We exactly. have to learn a new skill. A new skill. Yes. So that rather than being uh, trapped by survivalist yes. ways of moving in the world, mm -hmm. we transform that constant vigilance into Calm observation. Yes. Now we thrive. Right. Non-judgmental observation. Let me look yeah. at this. Right? Yeah. Right that's now. That ex that's that expansion. Yes. You know? Yeah. So now we're learning to observe, catch a panoramic view. Exactly. Now for the many, many, many people mm -hmm. um, in marginalized communities, you can't make that switch immediately. Oh, hell no. Because <laughs> social injustice is still no, going absolutely. on and we still need to keep Yes. Our head on the swivel, uh, and yet he healing includes learning how to also step back, catch a panoramic view, so we we can mm -hmm. move more deliberately in alignment with thriving, not just mere survival yeah. that's full of throbbing. It's you know what you do. It's like emotional code switching. Yes. <laughs> you know, we can code switch at a job, no problem, right? Yes. We can we can put on that corporate tone if we need to. And then we know that when we're with people who are like us, it switches back. Mm -hmm. But we somehow don't know how to emotionally code switch, mm -hmm. right? Which is like, I'm going to be, I'm going to keep my eye on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna keep my eye on the situation. Yes. Then when I get to a place of safety, mm -hmm. I can calm. 
Yeah. And that's what, that's, that's that kind of like, it doesn't always need to be on a swivel. Like I, you know, like I, I tell a lot of my clients who are parts, I was like, listen, keep your eye on those people and learn what calm feels like. Yes. So you can switch to that. So you can enjoy it. So Let's you can cultivate it. Let's absolutely strengthen yeah. it. And, and the thing is back to your, your reflection on restfulness because we come from a people that in order to keep their heads above water had to go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. We may feel some kind of way about uh, even thinking about resting. Like, am I going to dishonor these folks who work so hard? Yes. So it's revolutionary to decide, to even decide before you even do it. Right. To decide, I'm going to rest. I'm going to recharge my, my batteries in honor of that is how you honor your ancestors you know absolutely honoring them yes. you know they they would want the best for me well how can i uh create the conditions mm -hmm. for those experiences and yet let let myself rest yes that is <sighs> that is the goal baby that is right? you know the the amount of times I told my clients, I was like, you know, mm -hmm. if you need like a leave of absence because you just need to sleep, that's <laughs> valid. I yeah. was like, you you need to rest. Yes. You need you need to rest. You need it's to like rest. So, I mean, we've is, been through a lot. We need to rest. You need to just take a beat. Um, you can yes. say no, right? Yeah. That's a, another good practice. Right. Say no. Um, yes, it's it's rest, joy, calm are all things that are incredibly revolutionary acts and absolutely honor your ancestors. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And to, and to, you know, develop a new relationship with the word. No. Mm. Just say no. Just, yes. <laughs> to develop a new relationship with, with the word. No, that simultaneously yes. says yes to yes, wellness. To, yes. And if it says yes to my wellness, uh -huh. it also says yes to the wellness of the people in my life. Of course. Yes. An embodied yes and an embodied no. Boom. Get comfortable with it. Yes. Get, 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 get. Yes. Yes. You'll know. <laughs> the, and the, the beautiful thing is, and this goes out to the audience, the more you know, you learn how to embody that yes and no, mm -hmm. the more peaceful your life's going to be because you're going to be, you're going to be moving in congruence yes. to what's, what, what suits your soul, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's, mm -hmm. it's so important. It is. Now, I think, it, it will be interesting to also explore another another area of busyness with restfulness. Mm. Because we were talking about how before the pandemic, people consciously and unconsciously distracted themselves with busyness to not feel their feelings. Yes. So then here comes the pandemic. I'm feeling them. Yes. <laughs> like absolutely. nobody's business. Absolutely. And and uh learning new ways of 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 giving and receiving support to be with the feelings in yeah. a new way. All right. So now we're talking about the ancestors and yes. mm, what would they say? And we're like, well, they would say yes if at the end of the day wellness is being honored. Right. Um so can we have uh, a busy creative life and still rest. I think you can. I agree. <laughs> I think we're both on the same. Yeah, yes. you know, but it, it kind of goes back to that that somatic sensation mm -hmm. of calm, mm -hmm. right? And I, th I mean, even one on one, you can you can run into someone, interact with somebody, and feel completely depleted yes like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and then you can be around another person that completely lights you up yes and it's restorative yes and that's restful yes you know? it's liberate it's fast it's exciting but you feel restored and yes. to me that's restful so like i think if you if you attune yourself to mm -hmm. that embodied yes and embodied mm -hmm. no if you're busy but mm -hmm. you're doing the things that delight you yes you're just it is right you don't it's it is restful. It know? is restful. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and thank you for saying, saying that because, 
you know, there are so many versions of restfulness. Absolutely. You know, uh, aside from sleeping. Yeah. So a, a term I, uh, it's used a lot with like working out. It's called, um, uh, I think it's active rest. Active rest. Active rest. Hey, that shows up in theater school. Active oh, rest. Active rest. Mm -hmm. You When you're, for example, if like I've, I used, back in the day, I used to do marathon <laughs> training. Uh -huh. So like on Sundays, you'd be involved in what's called active rest or active recovery. That's uh -huh. what it's called. Uh -huh. um, and those days you wouldn't run. You would just do gentle movement. That would be good for your muscles. Mm hmm not overexert them, but still restore them. Mm. And that's kind of what we, maybe it's active recovery. Active rest mm -hmm. is more very intentional. Uh, it just, you're just intentional about the way you're moving. Yeah. But you're still moving because yeah. if you just sit in, that's the thing. If, if you're working out that much and you yeah. rest too, if you sit still too much, you'll actually like get really sore. Uh -huh. So you're, you're just gentle walking. Gentle. Very gentle, very soft. Suavecito. Suavecito. Yes. Right. And that's kind of like, I think emotionally mm -hmm. how we have to, how we have to kind of be, um, kind of consider it, you mm -hmm. know, like I'm gonna be real with you. This is, this is active recovery for me. Cause I'm, yeah. cause I'm sitting here talking We're we're like, we're just mm -mm -mm, mm -hmm. back and forth. Mm -hmm. This is restorative to my soul. Mm -hmm. This is very different than a PFA or a PTA meeting, which I would find absolutely draining, you know? <laughs> so like yeah. this, and so I, I try to be very deliberate with my engagements yeah. because is it going to be restorative? Yes. And busy? Yes. Or is it going to be busy and draining? I'm with you completely, 110% yeah. to use your words, because years and years ago, I experienced burnout. Mm -hmm. Burnout being a thing that uh, is, is, is a result of disconnection from ourselves. Yeah. You know, no matter what uh, good self-care skills you had, losing perspective disconnects us. Absolutely. Right? Yes. And so... Uh, I have been really committed to practicing ways of that restorative, yeah, you know? Absolutely. And so it may not necessarily look as less activities, mm -hmm. because the Lord knows I have a lot of activities. <laughs> Here is one more. Right. <laughs> you know, but it's not always how much you do but how you do it absolutely where restfulness is part of the strategy yes you know you were talking about how you could be busy but it, it's something that enriches your soul yes what a difference between the noise that is toxic busyness absolutely <laughs> absolutely the that burnout just, one that is burnout and that is you know uh, same same thing happened to me i was i was doing the most as i think i i don't know any clinician that isn't doing right the most we have multiple gigs <laughs> it's part of being a therapist oh yeah right absolutely. there's multiple hats yeah we wear know? multiple hats part of it so that you know we recharge ourselves using our skills in different ways instead of only therapy right absolutely you know absolutely but there are different ways of having multiple gigs deliciously yes that's the thing, right? And as someone who experienced burnout, definitely in 2020, um, where it actually mostly where everything kind of really came to head for me, mm -hmm. now I'm very like, how does this feel to me? Yes. You know, I started started taking uh, singing classes every Thursday because I was mm. a singer. I used to sing, I was a choir girl. And it is the most delightful restorative thing. Yeah. Do I not want to go sometimes? Of course, because it's hard, but it's mm -hmm. a good hard. Yeah. You know, it's a restorative hard. Yeah. And enlighten us like, you know what? Even if it is one more thing, this is the thing that brings me delight. Yeah. I love it. Let's yeah. do it. I, I, I hear you. My husband jokes about how, how, how does it go again? Like four burners, six spots. Yes. He says, that's me. Four burners, six spots. But we do fun things. But that they're are also with delicious things. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's very different. And you can have multiple activities in your life they're not all happening every day right some are happening monthly right or seasonally yes you know but they are restorative absolutely, absolutely. that's very different from toxic busyness yes you know because toxic busyness feels like it's for someone else it's not for you mm -hmm. it's for somebody else you're mm -hmm. doing this you're saying yes to someone else while saying no to yourself when you start, when all your itinerary, pasa? right? Mm -mm. 
when all your itinerary is yes, yes, yes to other people. Yeah. You're going to be drained. Exactly. Exactly. Yes to you. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Hmm. Okay. What's your yes? Oh my gosh. What do you mean? Like all the things that I say yes to? Well, the ones you choose to share right now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I, I say yes to, um, movement. Like Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, I've, I work out, uh, I lift weights. I hate it, but I do it because women of my age are supposed to start lifting weights, uh, to stave off. <laughs> oh, let us talk. Let it, that's a whole other conversation, <laughs> yes. right? I was like, Oh, I'm looking down the barrel of perimenopause. Ooh, Perry. So like, oh, I'm not looking down the barrel. We are full on full dancing, on. embracing, you know, I just Ooh. know that I'm on that road and I need to work on preserving my bones and tendons. Let me tell you what. So definitely mm. a yes to that. I say yes to that. Mm-hmm. I say, um, yes to myself on Fridays. I don't see clients on Friday. So I say no for yes for me. Boom. You know, um, my singing class, uh, her, I hercle durkle. Do you know what hercle durkle means? No. It literally means to lay in bed for too long. So like every Sunday I literally lay in bed way too long with my daughter. I teach her the art of hercle durkle. Beautiful. We just sit there. Wow. Alpha, alpha, alpha generation in process. I'm just teaching her how to rest. Yes. Her dad brings me coffee. I sit there, wait, wait, wait so long that I get hungry and I have to get out of bed. (laughs) You know, Um, I am very deliberate. I try to honestly take some time by myself. Like I'll, you know, once or twice a year, I'll go to Palm Springs, get a hotel by myself for two nights, Uh get a charcuterie board. Be left the hell alone. Come on. Watch some Bridgerton. Come on. Talk Nobody about, talk to me. Talk about recharging those batteries. That is like, I need to, like, when I, usually around this time of the year, I'm like, ooh, it's turned. Ooh, the <laughs> desert is calling. Um, and, you know, like, there's, there's, like you said, seasonally, like, between September and December, I call it my Super Bowl because there's, like, tons of birthdays in September, mine included. Mm. I love Halloween. Oh, me too. Yeah. Yeah. I, you're Aquarius. Oh, no, you're Libra. Libra. Virgo? Libra. Oh, hi. When's your birthday? 30th. Oh, 27th. So we're both oh, Libras. We're very look close. at that. Okay. That makes sense. So like, you know, there's, I love Halloween. I mm. love Christmas. I decorate my house. I'm doing the fucking most, but I love it. it yes. Is, I probably should say no more to those things, but then I'm like, I'm not going to do all my fun things that I like to do. Yeah. And then I, I become a cocoon and then I go underground and don't do anything See? for like another couple months. But right there, you're giving yeah. a great example of how you know, you're, you're pausing long enough to observe what you need to do in that moment. Yeah. And it's you a know. fun time. It's Is a it time. restorative through, uh, uh, a high energy activity yeah. or is it restore restorative by just cocooning, you know, yeah, yeah. It's just true. listening, listening to the body Listen. knows everything. Let me tell you, the body is wise. Mm hmm. And that is literally why, like, I have all, like, my certifications in certain areas because I believe in the wisdom of the body. I do, too. It carries all the information. It's like we're walking filing cabinets. Yes. Like, the body carries a record of even the stuff we don't remember. Absolutely. I know we have the whole body keeps the score. We always focus on, like, trauma and stuff like that. But there's more. There's so much more. The body knows joy. The body knows rest. The body yes. knows pleasure. Yes. Listen to it. Listen to it. And talking about the whole honoring the ancestors, when you think, oh, this is so uh, interesting and exciting to me. Yeah. When you think about the things we eat. Oh, yeah. The things, um, the way we move. Oh, the music. The way we move, even walking. Yes. You know. These things came down. Oh, yeah. They live in the body. Yes. The the soft, the soft, like, you know, when you live, when you have a, I mean, you're from Panama, from my family's from El Salvador, you don't, you don't have people from that close to the beach that don't know how to slow it down. Right? The ease of the beach is in you. <laughs> Listen, I lived near the beach when I was growing up in Panama. That is, to this day, my church. Yes. That is my... At that time, my dogs walked me. Yes. Because <laughs> it was three, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, but to this day, now here living in the U.S., I have to drive to the beach. Yeah. But that is where I go when I need to, you know. Absolutely. Just... Yes. Even though our ancestors worked hard. and mm-hmm. I bet you that when they were able to rest, aprovecharon. Aprovecharon. They took advantage. They now, were like, I'm going to rest. You know, and and we know it when we think about 
the musical genres that came to be. Mm-hmm. ¿Qué estaban haciendo? Oh, yeah. Activating joy. Oh, yes. The drums, the rhythm, the el sazón. You know, there's, there's, there's a playfulness to yes. it. Yes. And not only activating joy, also processing pain. Yes. Oh, because my gosh. Because the drum yes. is the heartbeat. Yes, the drum, the... All that bilateral stimulation. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. It's all so, there. So, you know, we've inherited rich, rich healing ways. Absolutely. And we carry them out, some of them unconsciously, and we're learning to be more conscious about them. Of course. Yeah. There's, there's, yeah. Oh, we could talk about that too for hours. Like right? the, the joy of, of tapping into what isn't inherent, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And you know, don't don't let this don't let this one country pro- con- convince you that this is the way to thrive. Yeah, you know. Yeah, the way yeah. to thrive is in softness mm-hmm. and quiet mm-hmm. and ah, just chilling the fuck out. Yes, <laughs> yes. Take it down, everybody. Everybody, take, take it, it down. down. And out. Just take it down, like. Yeah. Three notches. My goodness. L- listen to your yourself breathe. Oh, yes. Just literally take take a fucking beat. Can I, t- <laughs> can I tell you something? Even with perimenopause dancing a full on bolero with me. Yes. Squeezing me sometimes a little too much. Yeah. I have to say, I, I, I try to remind myself, OK, this is a new experience in my body's evolution yeah how can i be of support to the body in this moment in yes. time yes you know and if it means pause just listen to myself breathe even if a hot flash is taken over <laughs> Then that's what it means. Then that's just what you have to give your body. Yeah, let's honor the body. Yeah, I mean it's it's busy, constantly it does so well to us. Right, thank it. Let's yes. thank it. Let's learn to thank it. You yeah. know, because it's 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 busy in so many ways when we're not even thinking about it. Absolutely, absolutely. The body is. Uh, we're so hard on it. Especially women, but that's that is another podcast. That's another, for that, that, listen, we we have already unpacked like seven topics easily that we could do separately. Absolutely, yeah, a hundred and ten percent. But yes, the there was a I think a poem that says like something about like honoring the soft animal of your body, and I love that because it's just like it is. It's just it's soft. It's yeah. tender. Yeah, tend to it. Mm-hmm. It got you through a pandemic, right? You know. Uh, and and so much more and so much more. <laughs> it's gotten through so much you're you know that inheritance yeah. and what we've what, like there's there's so much to it like just honor it and and be soft with it drape it in, in clothing that feels soft yeah. let it rest yeah. sleep feed it yeah. tend to it put some block oh. on it um i wow i enjoyed hearing your voice saying all of that the yes. whole draping and the mm, oh yes mm, yes yes Gentle, 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 gentle. Yeah, yeah, let's call out our softness. Absolutely, the world is too hard. We don't need to. Con- we don't need to bring that into us. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we don't. It's... Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was good. Wow, Andrea, this was good. I enjoyed every moment. This this me was too. incredibly restorative for me too. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you for having me. Thank you, and thank you for joining us. And, you know, hopefully this invited you in, into juicy reflection. It yes. did for me. I loved it. Yes. It did for me. It is our Same. time. It is our time mm-hmm. to pause and help this world shift. Thank you so much, Melissa. It was a pleasure and an honor to be here with you. Likewise. Thank Likewise. You. Thank you all. You're invited to subscribe if this was your first time. See you next time.